Hi, my name is Caroline uh, Yan Zhong. Um, I was trained as a fashion designer uh, in Paris and London. Um, for me, um, I'm interested in um, how emotion is mediated by technological artifacts. Um, because, for, and for me as a fashion designer, um, it's the essential is about appropriating a materi material reality in relation, interacting with the body um, to either communicate or manipu manipulate <coughs> emotional states. So um, I'm interested to see how technology uh, would pay, play a role. Um, this back in 2013, I have been uh, doing, uh, making tangible the emotion through bodily forms and in, to inform uh, fashion practice. Um, I have, um, using data from Gross National Happiness Survey and to map it onto a dummy and remake a dummy so as to uh, using the form to display in internal status. I also tried uh, using a quantified self method to to um, track my emotion in color and doodle and then use these patterns accumulated to inform my uh, fashion design practice. However, I found there's an issue because um, the technology doesn't, um, couldn't cope with the serendipity or the complexity that's um, the entanglement of emotion. But as a fashion practitioner and maker, you won't deliberately preserve the serendipity generated by material or by interaction so as to observe the fresh, non-existent relationships in this mediation. So I was looking for technology um, or technology-enabled materials that could have this integrity, have this marriage of computational intelligence and material aesthetic serendipity. And I was looking for this material for my PhD research at the uh, Royal College of Art. Then I f when I found um, soft robotics, I, I was quite excited. I think I, wow, I found the um, I found the uh, uh, the material. Currently, I experiment with um, soft robotic materials and mechanism to make dynamic artifacts, uh, which means they generate movements responsive or um, adaptive to human emotional cues. I connect this movement like um, the. the the jacket that show that with my pole sensor, and I sometimes wear them in my um, speak that um, when my pulse rate accelerate, which is very often when I'm speaking, and then this um, thing on me will generate movements. I can't see them, but the audience would. I'm interested basically to observe what relation it disrupt and what new dynamic it could facilitate. Um, I have some samples of this um, in front. You're welcome to come and have a squeeze. Um, some more samples. I want to know that there's a sound quality there. Anyway, it doesn't sound really... This one doesn't play. So these are material studies. Um, and what I'm really looking from this material is what are the properties, the perceptual properties and sensual properties of this material um, that design could exploit for the communication or for the um, um, uh, new imagination on emotion relations. Um, I understand that in the robotic engineering community, they're more looking at the functionality. So really, um, my research is about actually probing about relations using um, real objects and sometimes fictional objects to probe a non-existent relations that's not there. Um, so I, has, um, I started using, after the material study, I started to use them into three kind of scenarios um, in relation with the body. So on the body, in the space, as installation and as an um, environment. I'm trying to speculate if these uh, objects around us could move in relation, responsive or adaptive to our emotional cues. Um, what does it mean? What relations they're creating? What they're mediating? So this one I was imagining um, as a nonverbal communication. 
as part of body extension that, like some of the animals, we could display our cues with nonverbal um, form of communication. This is the same as a pole sensor, as a spatial, as a spatial installation. So people could pick up a stone and then the fabric installation in the space will start to move. The speed of the spinning uh, sync with the heart rate, so you can either meditate to make it slower um, movement, or you can run around and to make it spin really wild. So actually, uh, three people can do it at the same time. Um, what I'm so observing is that with, with mediation, um, what is the human, human interaction that's mediated by this, by this type of disruptive dynamic? It's like collective choreography in the space. Hope the two will run together. Yes. Um, and then this is a uh, during the London Design Festival. This is a try to see if this is as part of the ambience, as part of the environment in the uh, built uh, environment. How's that feel? Um, I connected, so this one, even though very subtle, still work in progress, I program it in with five behaviors. Each behavior, um, I'm connecting with the facial recognition software. Uh, the idea is that um, they will record people's face, emotional reaction to each behavior, and later on the piece could learn um, the pattern of this space and this crowd of people. Um, after a time, it could deliberately display a certain behavior so as to influence um, on people's emotions. They're really subtle. Um, I'm working, working on making them make uh, more dramatic um, displays. That's two other behavior. You really have to work around the constraint of um, silicon and pump and the air, how much you can do, what is the behavior. It's actually a really serious making process that you just negotiate with a new different type of hybrid materials. Um, here you can show that's a piece over there and uh, all the pieces encouraged for touch and interaction and uh, um, this is software display. Um, so my practice, I just summarize what I'm doing as I'm only at the beginning of the second year, so it's quite early age. Um, and instead of developing a theory, I'm really just sharing with you what I'm doing. So if you have any thought, please come and feedback to me. So I've found I'm doing three things in parallel. I've got studio practice, as I've shown um, just now. Um, I'm equally enthusiastic in catalyzing social debate on this new agent, uh, on the agency of this new material, which is essentially a machine, but dress up or in the appearance of organic, lifelike movement and make analog movement. Uh, when we're living or mediated by objects made from these um, uh, materials, um, how is life? As, for example, um, clothes and objects, historically, they're static. And for me, now they could move and it looks like disruptive many identity boundaries. And I found that something quite fundamental for me. So um, I run workshops to catalyze debate in a cross discipline I call um, robotic engineering, psychologists and sometimes sci-fi writers and design students together for conversation. Um, also, for social imagination, I'm going to show you my next few slides. Uh, this is also during the London Design Festival, so we got 16 people, each from... None of the two people are from the same background. Um, so you see, really, um, people never look at the same topic with that same angle. So we were talking about the potential of dynamic artifacts to communicate emotions. Um, I invite people to come and imagine when interacting with them. And so far, the feedback is focused on the texture of um, the surface texture, the movement, which is lifelike, and the touch, the tactile quality. And there's often people feedback that's quite comforting. Um, I did also, uh, other than facial, thank you. Um, yeah, so you're invited to come and Tell me your feelings. Um, so I went workshop with people um, 
I give them these toolkits so they will make um, their imagination in a tangible way and we document and exhibit it in a tangible way. This is just last, this weekend, uh, past weekend in Berlin, it's a festival called um, State of Emotions, where we together explore this um, concept of extimacy that you display voluntarily or passively that your intangible emotional cues and communicate to the others. Um, that's one of the robots people made. He called this a flirting bot <laughs> for people who are shy. Um, so I also um, bring access of this um, um, toolkit to um, design students. Last week uh, we have run a week-long Across RCA project. So we've got, um, that's the, I've got the last slide. Um, <laughs> this is la second from the last. So um, just finally, uh, I put this on slides just because um, I went to the uh, Soft Robotics Symposium in Cambridge and I'm the only designer present. Uh, when discussing about what's the um, limit or the future of soft robotics and uh, there's one consensus is that scientists um, is good at building and uh, solving problems but um, they re uh, it's what to build that's the imagination and I think um, there's a point that um, across disciplinary participation there's a value there to co-shape or co-imagine the future of this technology so I'm just showing sharing with you the students work uh, inspirational but temporary early stage um, soft robotics and I think that goes with the appetite of at breakfast So many of these are, you can see, it's quite speculative. Um, so I'm in the junction of formalizing my PhD research and uh, in which way I could shape the, um, whether I'm developing personal effective robo robotics uh, for a real contextualized um, um, purpose, for example, mental health or rehabilitation, or I'm just actually running, bridging the different disciplines and to co-speculate the near future. Um, welcome for your advice. <laughs>